Time to tackle low voltage wiring, both for data transfer and controlling our HVAC systems and garage doors. And I'm gonna put some spare conduits in while I'm at it. Let's hope this goes a little smoother than wiring for lights. Today, I'm going to be installing some Cat6 ethernet cable as the last step of our electrical rough-in. This is a copper wire that has eight conductors in it and it's used to transmit data. It's something that you definitely don't wanna overlook when you're building a new home and all your walls are wide open. It's so easy to run this cable now and so much harder and more expensive later. This is Cat6 gigabit ethernet cable. It's 23 gauge copper wire, four pairs, so eight conductors. And this is type CMR cable. I believe the R stands for riser, which means this is rated for going from floor platform to floor platform. The box that I got has like a spool internally that makes it really easy to feed it out, which is fantastic. Because if you've ever pulled wire before, that is one of the biggest issues is kinking and dealing with the natural coils that come from a spool of wire. And like any good wire and cable installation, it all starts with a good plan. I'll be honest, my plan is pretty basic compared to some of the home automation and home wiring systems that you can put in. There are some folks, especially the professionals in this field that really take this to the nines and have an ethernet cable running everywhere or having conduit running everywhere so that maybe one day when fiber is common in homes, you can pull fiber. But mine is going to be fairly basic. I have a double gang box mounted essentially where our main entertainment center is going to be in our living room. And this will essentially serve as my network hub or all the location where all my wires come out of the wall. The main system that we'll be utilizing these network cables is a hardwire security camera system. We're going to have what five cameras, one in the front soffit, one in the rear soffit over the deck, one in the utility room, and one in each garage section, both front and back. Those will be power over ethernet cameras or POE where one of the conductors or one pair of the conductors is used to transmit the voltage necessary to power the actual camera and the other conductors are used for the data. This is a really easy way to have super low latency camera and it doesn't rely on a Wi-Fi network to operate and record. I didn't really wanna be linked to a monthly subscription like Ring in order to capture all that video data. I wanna have a hard drive here that I can just turn the TV on and check all the cameras instantaneously in real time with audio and video. So here's our living room and if we pivot over, looking through the studs, that room over there is our office. We're planning to do kind of a corner desk setup here. So we have an outlet obviously to power, but this other single gang box, I'm going to run two ethernet cables too, so we can have a double ethernet port. That way we can both have computers plugged in separately if we need to. Right below me is our utility room, which I'm also gonna run two cables to, one for the camera that I just mentioned, but also another one in case I want to have like a network switch or something down there. Remember, we're gonna have an addition on this side of the house, the south side, which is adjacent to our utility room. So I wanna make sure that I have at least one cable down there that could be used in, a, in the event of going through that wall with network cable to extend the network into that house in the future. I could probably put a switch or a repeater or something downstairs in the utility room that could then go straight into that house. One thing to keep in mind and something that I'll be really conscious of when I'm doing all of these routings is the high voltage electrical. So this or just standard 120 volt house wiring. And it's important to keep this data cable away from this wiring because of induction. So flowing current through a copper wire creates a magnetic field that spirals out basically in a, an invisible tube. And it can actually induce current in another piece of copper that runs parallel. That would not be good because current is how data is transmitted and you could be corrupting your data because of magnetic fields from your normal wiring. The common distance that I've read is one foot when the wires are running parallel and at least one inch apart when they're running perpendicular. So I'm gonna do my best to follow that. The wires coming out of this box will either come down and stay that foot away and then come up this stud and go up into the attic or they'll come straight up here. I do have nine cables coming in here so I might have to do a little bit of both in order to keep them the, away from the edge of the stud so a drywall screw doesn't penetrate them. The first run I'm gonna think about is my front soffit camera, which I'm gonna to have to come up over at least one stud. Here I'll come into the attic over top these, that little attic two by four um, end joist there, and then down and into basically that dormer. If you look really closely, you can see that pull string. I put a string in the box in the soffit for me to be able to easily connect that wire to and pull it into that soffit box because the soffit is all closed off now. 
I did something similar at the back soffit. You can see it's coming right over my little roof vent. So I'm just gonna stick the cable right through that gap. The majority of the rest of the wire runs are gonna be most easily run in the attic. Again, I'll keep that foot distance away from my wires up here, which I tried to keep relatively close to the same spacing as far as it being in one line. So that way I can run all my data cables, you know, just together a foot or so away from this thing. I almost forgot about the TV too. I don't have the box mounted yet, but that's gonna be just a normal outlet for a television that's want mounted on the wall. And on the other side of that stud likely, I'll put a probably a double gang box with a flexible piece of conduit, maybe rigid conduit if I'm really feeling ambitious, that comes over and down to this box. I might actually even switch this guy out for a box that can more easily accept conduit. This does have one little half inch knockout in the back, but I believe they make some low voltage boxes with three quarter or one inch knockout so that you, that flexible conduit, conduit can easily attach. That way we can have whatever we need to down in the entertainment center. And honestly, this is gonna be a full wall built in. So it probably doesn't even make that much of a difference, but we can run our HDMI cables and ethernet through the wall. So just for a nice clean look right up to the TV. Now for the worst part, which is the drilling. I'm gonna to try to drill all the holes at once just to get this over with. I'm using a what was it, 13 16 bit, so my three quarter inch bit wore out. So a slightly larger hole than three quarter inch, and that should fit me at least four or five cables in each hole. I'll probably do two runs up this wall. I'm gonna need, I think, nine, 10 cables total. I'll do two holes up through this blocking. I'm gonna need eight or nine cables total, so I'll just split them between the two holes. And then we'll be off to the races. Don't mind my construction sandals, by the way. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely a rocking the shooby look now, but it is what it is. Sometimes I gotta take a break from the work boots. Anyway, these small runs where I only know I need one cable, I'm just stepping down to a 3 8 drill bit just to keep the hole smaller. I'm gonna have to come back and air seal all these penetrations anyway, so smaller the hole, less sealing I gotta use. There's a garage camera right below me. I'm gonna go right over here. Let's get started running it. It is hot as blazes up here. So this is not a job I'm really looking forward to, but we gotta get it done because we got insulation out back that's gotta get installed. And I do not wanna put this in after the insulation is up there. My general philosophy in running wires is just try to loosely get it from point A to point B, going around all the obstacles you know you're eventually gonna need to get around, like this wall plate up here. And then from your point B, start fastening your way all the way back to point A, where you leave yourself plenty of slack and you can cut the cable. I don't really have the right staples to fasten this with. They make these nice rounded staples. So I'm just going to gently use my half inch cable staples from my electrical rough in, which I have extra of. They will hold the cable just fine. I just have to be careful not to smash it in too hard where it would crimp these lines, which would affect the data rate that they're able to transmit. Here's a closer look at that nylon pull rope. This was left over from our electric girl service. I just cut little pieces off of it. So it's really strong stuff. Definitely not gonna have an issue with strength. I'm going to use electrical tape to connect it, this to this. And then we are going to pull that pull rope right through that vent right there. You can see I've already pulled my 14 gauge wire for the Christmas light outlet. So that's a switched receptacle up in that soffit for our Christmas lights. Before someone mentions in the comments, yes, I know that wire is not stapled within 12 inches of the box. It's gonna be okay. It's one of those times where I had to bend the rules just a little bit to get the final outcome. If we didn't have our soffit totally boxed in, I could have stapled it, but it is what it is. So I'm gonna pull that data cable alongside that white one. Again, trying to keep them apart at least a little bit. I'll probably try to keep this on the right side of the rafter bay, but this should tape right up and pull right into that box. I'll leave probably a foot or so of excess out of the box when I have it through. For anyone that watched me pull this Romex wire through, I hope this goes a lot more smoothly than that did. No. Oh my gosh, that was so easy. That was incredible. <laughs> That's how I envisioned the Romex going the first time and it did not really work out with that. 
Now for the really fun part of stapling this over our open stairwell. This is actually the recommended setup by OSHA. Two very shoddily constructed platforms with two by fours and then a flimsy aluminum ladder. That'll get you up to the height needed to fasten all the way up till we get to the attic. Unfortunately, the mic pooped out for these next few clips and I didn't notice, so just read the captions instead. I thought it would be a good idea to record this in case something bad happens, but knock on wood, that does not turn out to be the case. to me as a spider monkey on several occasions throughout this wiring project and I don't disagree. In fact, I give major props to guys going into attics and commercial ceiling spaces on a daily basis to run higher like this. This is such not an easy job. That's one run down and hopefully the rest go as smoothly. They shouldn't be as difficult to staple without having that giant stair opening below. The next one that I'm working on now is the back soffit camera. So there's my run up above the rafters and I just have to turn it and then it's coming right in there. I have a similar pull string taped to it that I have to somehow get out from that box. Unfortunately, our deck is not built yet, but we're getting there. So I'm gonna have to get creative. I'm gonna see if I can hook it with this piece of scrap 12 gauge wire as a, as a hooking stick and keep one hand on the inside of the door so that I don't fall out of this dang opening. All right, I got part of it. Nice, I was able to grab it from the outside. Now I should be able to pull through. Oh, we're snagged on something. Come on now. I got it from both sides. It's just a matter of getting it through the box. It's not going as smoothly as the other one went in. Huh. Well, I might just have to, I guess I can't really leave the pull string attached. There she goes. Next, we're heading downstairs for the garage cameras and utility room lines. I softened down the bath ceiling to house the lines for this mini split and conveniently it's also really helped with both the bath fan and I'm going to be able to have a more convenient route into my utility room with this ethernet line. And quite honestly I don't think you'll ever be able to tell the difference between the 9 foot original ceiling height and the 8 foot bathroom ceiling height in this tiny little bathroom. It's only like 5 foot by 5 foot. Low voltage wiring technically doesn't need an actual box. They make these frames that are just an empty rectangle for the drywall to go around. But those are not very conducive to air sealing, which we care about. So that is why we went with normal electrical boxes for all of our low voltage outlets. We are done with the rough pulls. Everything's still really loose and sloppy looking. So the next step is the you know tedious and painful one, which is going through dressing all the wires tight to the studs so we don't get in the way of our insulation and stapling everything in. So let's get through that. The worst part about this is they're almost all up in that attic and it is probably, it's like 90 degrees out today. So it is not super comfortable up there. I will say that much. And just like that, we're all tidied up. 
I did not staple the side on the right of the stud bay because I still have to go to the store and get a one of those ENT boxes with conduit knockouts in it. I'm gonna get some blue Smurf tube to go from that up to a box behind the TV. And then I'm also gonna do blue Smurf tube from that all the way up into the attic in case we ever need to get more lines down here or get the security lines up into the attic because we will eventually be adding on to the house you know in the future and that's going to be on that side with all the ethernet poles done except for just the little tv which i'm waiting to go to the store to get parts for that i'm going to walk you through the rest of the low voltage in here i didn't get a whole lot of film of this honestly because it was kind of boring but i'll at least walk you through what's going on with it what runs are going where and kind of how i have all that set up First are thermostat, dehumidifier, and ERV controls. I have these two boxes mounted at shoulder height. The left box will have a regular smart thermostat on it to control both the heat pump and the dehumidifier. A good thermostat can do both capabilities for that. And then the ERV has its own separate control. I'll have much more detail on this in the actual ERV installation video, along with the dehumidifier and HVAC startup videos. The idea here is just to get the wires in place that I need before we start putting insulation in and SEGA and drywall. It's a lot easier to do that now than later. Those wires run through the floor on the other side of this mid-span blocking. They come out here, and again, I'm trying to keep them away from the high voltage line, so I have a little gap bent around there, so there's at least an inch gap where they cross perpendicularly there, and then they take a 90 and come over into the utility room. Here I just drilled a couple little 3 8 holes and I have them coiled up. The dehumidifier is basically going to get mounted like right here on the wall and then the ERV is going to be mounted basically right next to it over there on the wall. So I left the ERV one a little bit longer. The heat pump wire I actually did several months ago when I installed the Mr. Cool system. So its routing is a little bit different. I went down here along with the radiant floor thermostat wire and that comes down, takes a 90 across the wall and it ends up right up here going into the universal system. Each of those wires is an 18-8 thermostat wire, so 18 gauge, eight conductors, which is way more conductors than I need really. I probably only need, between all three of these units, maybe 10 to 12 conductors total. So I have plenty for future use if something ever happens to one of them and I need to switch wires or anything like that. And I can also splice the wires inside of the utility room here. If for some reason one got severed or something during drywall, you never know what can happen. The last bit of low voltage in this build is the garage door system, the garage door opener, the sensors, and the switches. We have three garage doors on this build, this back one in the back shop here, and then two on the front. So obviously the openers are wired to be closest to where the doors are. So at the back door, we put another box here. This is 18-2 bell wire, just two conductor, 18 gauge. That goes over to that little box up there. We actually have a regular outlet and a low voltage box. That's because we're doing a side mount opener that will mount like just about in that area. It's not like the traditional garage door openers that mount like where those electric boxes are. The side mount opener is basically gonna be the hub. So it needs to communicate to the two sensor wires on either side of the garage door and the switch. So we put a box where each sensor is gonna be. We left plenty of slack in there. We'll just put a wall plate on there and then they have these little connectors that look really nice and they come right out to the sensor, which I believe will mount on the track or close to it. Again, trying to keep the low voltage away from the high voltage, just keeping them in separate stud bays. In this case, it's not always possible to keep the foot distance apart. And if we have any problems when a light switch is on or something and the garage door opens, we will know what the issue was. It's basically the same story with these doors up here. However, there is one minor caveat. This is obviously like our front door now, right? The stairs go right up to the upstairs. So we have our garage door switches, one box, we'll have two switches on it, and that will control the two doors here. But because we're designing this for an addition, which will be on this side, we also put another box over here so that in the future, when this is more the door that we're coming in and out of the house with, we can also open the garage doors from here. Same thing with the light switches. This is a three-way light switch here that can control the main lights in the garage, and the other switch is all the way over there by the other door now. So both of these switches will be able to control these main lights. This is just temporary lighting, by the way. The real lights will come off the boxes in the front of the garage here. There's three of them for three rows of strip lights. 
I finally ran to the store today and got what I needed. So I'm going to switch this normal double gang box out for an ENT box and put one right up here where this TV is. Let me show you the ENT. I forget off the top of my head what ENT stands for. It's like electric non-metallic tubing maybe, but it's just basically a flexible plastic tube. I think it's called Smurf tube in the trade because of its color. And this is basically just a flexible conduit so I can come back and pull ethernet wires. This is a one inch that I got and I tested it. I could fit like up to about 10 ethernet cables in this. So it should be plenty for what I need. I really just wanna link these two boxes so I can pull probably one ethernet and one HDMI cable between the two. And then I'll do one run of this up to the attic in case I ever wanna bring more ethernet down here or bring ethernet from here over to the new utility room or over to the new addition. I can't really predict exactly what we're gonna do as far as networking or camera systems or whatever in the new addition. So I want to be prepared for having to pull more cable. I'm also putting two inch and a half conduits from the utility room all the way up to the attic. Those are rigid, just a straight run from top to bottom. And I think they're gonna come in handy at some point down the road. This is a short video I made describing exactly how I put these conduits in. I found an open stud bay that would fit two inch and a half conduits. My dot laser helped mark the hole locations and I drilled the openings with a hole saw. Then I slid the conduits in and screwed a temporary shelf below to hold them at the right spot. At the top, I made sure they were long enough to extend above all the insulation. I sealed the holes with big stretch and put a pipe strap around the center, thinking that would hold them up. But the next morning they had dropped about three inches, so that wasn't gonna work. To do it right, I cut off the tops and glued couplers above the top plate, which made sure they can't slide down. Another quick reseal, and now we have an easy cabling route for future solar or whatever else we need to get from the attic to utility room. Now, of course, I posted this on Instagram, and as usual with anything remotely considered electrical, the electricians of social media completely blew me up for not using fire caulk to seal the holes or riser clamps to secure the conduits. However, if you read the fine print, only an air seal is required by International Residential Code, not fire caulk, although stricter local codes may vary. I definitely don't disagree that Unistrut and pipe clamps would have been a secure way to hold these pipes, but I don't think they're going anywhere as is. One good suggestion from the comments was that solar wires usually require metal conduit, so I did later add a run of one inch EMT also. Now back to regularly scheduled programming, finishing this conduit install. All right, I got the box mounted, got the holes drilled, drilled one mistaken hole up here, which I'm not gonna use, but let me explain what I'm going to do. I have this connector in here that pretty much goes inside the stud and the tube is going to come across here through this stud over and then up into my TV box. Then my attic conduit's gonna come out of a connector that's gonna go right here all the way up through that mid span blocking and then over basically following where those cables are. I'm gonna tidy all that up so it's not gonna look so ratchet. But I initially thought it was gonna go kind of just up, then over, then back up, but then I realized, well, that's like twice the amount of elbows. I can do it in just 190 if I just go straight up and then over. And all the cables coming into this box are gonna enter both through here and then some are gonna wrap and come up under here. So I just started with the half inch knockout there. We'll see if I need to go any larger for the amount of cables that are coming in here. I've never worked with this ENT stuff before, but it's more rigid than you would think it is. It's also pretty expensive. I was surprised this 25 foot roll was like $45 or something like that. Like it's almost uh, 50 cents a foot, I would say, which is pretty close to the same price as Romex wire itself. And that's actually got copper in it. This is just plastic. From the looks of it, this just snaps into these connectors. So that's what I'm guessing is gonna happen. Yep, that sounds like it's in. Now I just gotta cut its length. And there she is. I think that looks pretty good. I did not have any special staples or clamps for this. I'm sure that they exist. So I just used a piece of pipe strap. This is what I use basically for every plumbing pipe and it holds it pretty darn well. I'm not too worried about it. I don't feel like there's a lot of rules with this low voltage because it really can't hurt anything if like, something bad happens, like the worst that can happen is you don't get to watch Netflix that night. So <laughs> there probably are some codes revolving around this, but I honestly don't really know them. So I'm probably gonna get blown up in the comments for some of this work, but that's okay.
And that is all she wrote for low voltage. I will take it. I fastened the Smurf tube every other stud or so going up along the top of that 2x4 ledger. And in the attic, I just fastened it up to the rafter. In case I ever need to pull a new cable through, it'll be waiting for me. One last thing I thought I had to share because this is insane. I went to go pull just a little bit of ethernet from the TV to the main box in that conduit. I pulled this out of the box and this is all I had left. It is exactly enough to get from that box to the other with just like six or eight inches of slack out of each box, which is perfect. This is 500 feet exactly this house used in ethernet cable between all the cameras and everything. That is the closest I've ever come on a material estimate or purchase ever and I'm amazed. That was my first ever low voltage system. I think it went pretty okay for what it was. Very basic system, but I think it's gonna work just fine for our little house. Maybe in the addition, I'll go a little bit crazier and plan something big out. But for now, this was a great learning experience. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.